when I was at CNN, we had no idea what was going on at Fox. Fox was not number one. We didn't care about Fox. In fact, in, um, in uh, July of 96, when MSNBC launched, we all paid a lot of attention at CNN. Mm -hmm. Three months later in October, about in 96, when Fox launched, none of us paid any attention. Hmm. None, none whatsoever. So when I, when I went over to Fox, this sounds horrible. I had never even seen anything on Fox. Really? We didn't even get ratings for Fox. We only got our own CNN ratings. So I didn't even know what Fox. Weren't, weren't we beating you by that? I, I thought I thought that I thought that Fox went ahead during the no, Bush Gore recap. Fox, no, no, no. Fox went ahead, and I will say this, uh, uh, it had nothing to do with me. But Fox, the first month that Fox was ahead, was the month I joined Fox, January of 2002. January of 2002. You know, it's so funny. I still think of you as the, the new gal at Fox. It was, like, it, was like, like, it was like 15 years later. It's like, well, Greta just got, it's like, dude, she's been here for a decade. The first night, the first night I was there, they said to me that I was doing my first two weeks of the show in New York. I was based in D.C. And they wanted me on the show with, with Bill O'Reilly. I'd never seen a show. This is February 4th, 2002. And I get on the show. And he asks me something, and I, yes, I think he said something like, say about Clinton being convicted of perjury. And Clinton was not convicted of perjury. I don't like Clinton, but he wasn't convicted right. of perjury. And I said that, and he goes, this is the no-spin zone. And I thought, what in the world is that? <laughs> I yeah, we always used to, there were, there were certain reporters we'd be like, he, he, we just can't put him or her on Bill because he would then be, you know, he'd want them to, well, what do you think? Like, I know what I know. And, and he would put people in awkward positions. And if you weren't Bill was always aggressive. A great colleague. Bill was always a good colleague with me, though. I mean, I always enjoyed him. But, but the thing is, it's like Fox obviously took off and it, and it crushed everybody else. But when, yeah. I came, but when I came over from CNN, and you have to also remember that the last six months when Fox has probably gained traction against CNN, we are so absorbed with 9-11 and the aftermath right. because you go 9-11 till January. I mean, we're consumed. With, plus, we had anthrax. I mean, we had everything going on. So the last thing we were doing really was paying attention to, you know, other networks. Right. Interesting. Interesting. And you're you, so you meet Roger Ailes the first time. Any uh, any yeah. any any, uh, any story there? Because there usually is. Uh, well, he's, uh, he, he was sort of, sort of funny. I mean, I didn't, you know, he's sort of a chubby little guy, you know, so he was nice to me. And, and, uh, and, and I was, and I, I really was not planning to go to Fox when I met him. I went up to, in, right. just to sort of see, well, maybe I'll try it. Maybe I won't. I didn't know much about it, but he seemed like a nice enough guy. I was there with my husband and um, we made a deal on a handshake, but here was the problem I had. Uh, I agreed to go for less money. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I then went back and looked at my CNN contract. They had me under contract until March 31st mm -hmm. um, about, mm -hmm. but I had a window when I was permitted to talk. So I wasn't right. doing, I wasn't filing it. Right. So I go back and look at my Fox contract and my CNN contract. And it says CNN has a, has a right to match. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh no. You know, and so like my husband says, you have to call Ailes and tell him. And I said, I'm not calling him. You call him. You're the one who I said, you're, you're the, you know, you're with me. And so we went back and forth. So I wrote a letter to Dick Parsons, who was CEO at the time. And because um, in my contract, it said who I had to deal with, but the people I had to deal with had already been booted in the merger. So Dick Parsons, right. who was then the CEO of Time Warner, was the only one. I wrote a letter to him and I said, it doesn't define match. And one of the things that matches is the environment. And I was at a tough time in the CNN environment because all my friends were getting, I walked down the hall at night and be another sign off the door of somebody who was getting, who had gotten, you know, let go right, or right. laid off. And, uh, you know, it was just a miserable environment for me because my friends were gone and I felt like, you know, I'm the last one, you know, and, and Dick Parsons. So you went to Dick Parsons, you told him that, hey, match could mean a lot of things. And, and what would... we hadn't defined it. It was not defined right. as money. I think everybody thought of it as money, but, um, right. you know, he let me go and he was gracious about it. Well, I remember Roger. Roger used to love meeting meeting with talent at 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 the opposing stations, even if he was and and if he wasn't interested in hiring him, the, he would hiring that person. He would meet with him in a public place. So like he'd have you know he and Larry King would have lunch at at Patsy's, uh, because Roger would be like. You know what? It's going to make him scared over there. They're going to give him more money for his contract renegotiation. My lunch with him just cost CNN a million dollars. I mean, he would sometimes intentionally do that, which I well, I once had, I once had lunch early on with him and my husband at Patsy's. It's funny you should mention right. Patsy's. 